Now let's talk through a little bit about global tables for DynamoDB. So one of the reasons that our infrastructure works really, really well with this is because we're able to leverage global tables. Now, previously, if you had to deal with handling cross-region data replication, this was a mammoth task, and this wasn't always easy. And what you get with DynamoDB Global Tables is you get the ability to totally let AWS handle that for you. You don't have to deal with the weight of that yourself, and that's huge, because that can be very difficult and complex to get right and to get the kind of latency that you want, which in many cases is going to be less than three seconds. But what we see with global tables on DynamoDB, at least in my testing, is we're generally able to get sub two second latency with our data, and I wanna illustrate that to you. But first, we need to create these tables. Now, let's go ahead and dive in here under DynamoDB. We are going to do all of this in the console. When, if you come back tomorrow, we're gonna to talk more about how you automate this with your infrastructure. But the first thing we want to do is just create a new table. And we're going to call this one countries. And then we need to create an ID. Now, our ID is going to be a number. We can leave the rest of the settings the same. And we're just going to go ahead and click Create. Now, note here in the top right, we're in Northern Virginia. So we're in US East 1. So I'm going to go ahead and create this table. Now, it's being created. Awesome. It's exactly what we wanted. You'll notice here that we do have a Global Tables tab. So once your table gets created, this is where you're gonna to go to configure other regions. And one of the great things is, even though there's multiple steps required to create your global tables, the console will walk through this with you. You can still do this manually. You'll just have to do a step at the end where you're able to tie your regions together. But let's talk about some quick requirements for using global tables with DynamoDB. Number one, you have to be dealing with empty tables. You can't take tables that already exist and then make them into global tables. What you'll have to do is you'll have to back those up, create the new table, make it a global table, and then insert that data into it. The other thing is your tables need to have the same name, and they need to be the same in terms of their structure with your hash key, sort key, across the regions that you're using. So in this case, we have a single key, and we are gonna use tables with the same name, but we see here that there is one kind of one error that we're gonna to have to deal with first, and that is that streams are disabled. Now there's four different options for using streams with DynamoDB. Luckily, the console is gonna go ahead and guide you to the right answer. We're just gonna go ahead and say enable, and this is going to make our table ready to go for global tables. Now the next thing we can do is we can just add a region. Now if you remember, we're gonna be doing AP Southeast 1, which is Singapore. We just hit continue, and it's gonna go ahead and go through the process of creating our global table. Perfect, that's what we want. Now we need to wait for this to finish up and then we're gonna have the ability to add an EU West one in Ireland as our other region. So let's give it just a second to apply. Perfect, that one's ready to go. And then we're gonna add in another region. So this is where we're gonna add in Ireland and we're gonna continue. So our table's creating. Once we're done with this, we will have three separate DynamoDB tables. This is important to understand. A global table is not one table. A global table are separate tables that are able to keep themselves in sync using the streams capability of DynamoDB. So you can see here that we also have some data. We actually have metrics that are tied to the relationship and the communication between each of the regions in our global table. And we can learn things like the latency that exists, and the pending replication count. And you can tie alarms to this. And we also could use this to potentially trigger some of the health checks that we're gonna put in place in Route 53. But again, this is not very fun to look at if you don't have any items. So if we look here, we can see that we have zero items included, which again, is what we had to start with. Now, let's go ahead and start the process of importing some sample data. Now, I wrote a script that's gonna go through and clean this data up a little bit and then push it out to DynamoDB. And we've defined these three regions that we have here. And we're actually going to just round robin those regions and we're gonna include these values sequentially. So it should not call the same region twice. And this will help us illustrate some of the functionality that we have with global tables. So let's just run node import.js. And we can see here, it's using AP Southeast one, EU West one, US East one. We're seeing all that come in and there's 186 total. Now, if I hit refresh, you're gonna notice a few things. We're starting to get values streaming in. You'll notice, first of all, that there were a few that we skipped here, like 13 and 14. So as I loaded it, those had already been pushed to other regions, but we were waiting on them to be synced inside of e, um, 
US East one, which is where we're at right now. And so if I actually go through on this and I hit refresh, we're gonna see that this continues to pass in new values. You can see, for example, that we have three columns here that are managed by AWS. This is a part of how global tables works. First of all, there's a deleting flag, there's an update region, and there's an update time. This is how it's able to keep, keep your data synchronized. But as we continue to reload this, we're gonna see that there's more and more values. And we could even move on past 100 items. We're gonna see that there's gonna end up being more. As I mentioned, we're up to 115 now, and we'll be finishing up here in just a second. And we're at you know, 133-ish or so. We're gonna see all of this kept in sync for our global tables. So that's exactly what we wanna see. Thank you.